So H.G. Wells put out a tome in 1931 called The Science of Life. And it's very thick. And I managed uh, to get a hold of it at the University of Alaska Library and spend a good deal of time um, looking into the blueprint that the oligarchs had in mind. And this isn't something that's sort of highlighted like Animal Farm or Brave New World. Um, I've never seen this anyplace else. I dug this out myself. And I think that you're getting into the roots of both this trans and post-human agenda, this final plan for singularity and ascension, and the messianic rule of this master race is encoded here with some of the ideas that are expressed by H.G. Wells in The Science of Life. And this is a thick puppy, and I found most of this toward the back of the book. And I just want to read a little bit. I'll put it up there so you can look at it and hit pause if you'd like. And I'm going to attempt to go over some of the highlights of what he has in mind. But what he's talking about here uh, in 1931 is the future of um, mental and physical modifications of the human body. So again, the elites were very fascinated in the late 19th century. They knew that the industrial revolution, like all revolutions, would run its course, that they would have eventually a soft economy, that they would eventually have policies that would deindustrialize the West and industrialize the East. How else are you going to walk into a uh, new world order unless you've leveled this thing out and messed up the politics and the economics enough so that the average person's going to say, well, anything's got to be better than this. Let's just give it a go. So he's talking about a type of transhumanism and even posthumanism. Bear in mind, in 1776, when Adam Smith would sort of proclaim this new era in the world, the world of old of agriculture would be now replaced by this new world of manufacturing. What he predicted there in uh, his book, Wealth of Nations, was that in the future, says Adam Smith, and this would be reiterated by Karl Marx about 70 years later, um, that in the future with the age of mechanization and the science of controlling life, says Adam Smith, that man would become more like machines and machines would become more like man. And each day that we gawk at the news or the science journals, this is what's in front of us. And this new sort of eugenics that calls itself biological ethics is usually big on framing these bizarre scenarios that if you could do this and you were a machine and this is what they're getting to, this is part of their plan. And it's ultimately a post-human plan, which I think is just another dressed up way of saying massive depopulation. But let's get let's get a little bit into the science of life. Um, uh, this is from page 1474, where he's talking about human social economy is based almost exclusively upon the mental modifications of the individual. And of course, what this type of esoteric alchemy has always been for this master class, master class has been that humans are going to insert themselves into the evolutionary process. So Charles Galton Darwin would say, why wait for another million years? Let's take the new technologies that we have today and really separate the master class from the rest of everybody else to bring in um, the entities of old and make ourselves the Messiah and truly replace God, because this is what they're up to here. Um, so it's always been about modification, but now we can take it to truly another level. And of course, this is going to have to be sold in the open conspiracy in the education system, UNESCO, the international uh, exportation of these ideas and through the media and so forth. Um, the more intelligent and comprehensive man's picture of the universe has become, the more intolerable has become his concentration upon the individual life with its inevitable final rejection. So we've given men this purported idea of freedom in this new democratic worldview, i.e. the Declaration of Independence or the French rights of man. But he's ultimately still going to be, at least scientific man, is going to be unhappy, okay? No animal would seem to realize his death. Well, we're unfortunately given this idea of consciousness, and so science can't explain what it is. The Bible seems to indicate that it's a communication process for us. 
uh, uh, guiding us toward our means of ascension through a revealed plan. But he's saying right here for scientific man, he needs to have another plan. And fortunately, the esoteric adepts have had a world plan, their great plan, their great work. And so he's saying, well, first is the belief system of personal immorality. So you can read on here about the conscious self and what must be done. But number two here, the second line of accommodation is the realization of his participation in the greater being. This is what the Kabbalan has been all about. And when we talked about the seven points of the hermetic Kabbalistic tradition, not only would there be a world encyclopedic mind, we'd bring the great minds and the masters of the oligarchical class together to direct world policy. But what you would need to do was to create this plan to the realize the you know the participation in the greater being. This is the, the language of the one from the Kabbalah, from the Kabbalah, the one you're participating. It's that Kabbalistic view that God's been spread into a million pieces. He doesn't necessarily separate from the universe. We are gods, but especially those people that were able to collect the parts and realize their prophetic place in doing this, they would be the messianic class and they would have a special role to play in the um, final stage of the story of the human race. And they would bring in, therefore, the post-human race. Um, the second line of accommodation, the realization of the participation in the greater, a central tenet of esoteric Kabbalah, uh, with which he identifies himself. So you lose your identity to the one, the beehive, part of the singularity process. Or as Wells just said in the open conspiracy, you give yourself over to the project of the world dictatorship, the world eugenic di dictatorship. Um, this is the essence of much religious mysticism. So he's saying this is the essence. Uh, when you take the core of Hermetic Kabbalism, this is the essence. Now, to bring God back together, we have to realize we are gods, especially the people that are conscious of this. And then in the process, apotheosis, you become gods. And then you pick up the pieces. There's going to be one class that's going to administer. And a tricky piece about this is you have to call in other dimensional entities. This is the essence of much religious mysticism. And it is remarkable how closely the biological analysis of the individuality brings us to the mystics. The individual, according to the second line of thought, saves himself by losing himself. Now, there's two worldviews, right? The biblical biopolitical worldview, where you give yourself over to this revealed plan, the uh, Messiah, the biblical Messiah, and we gain ascension and eternal life through that. Or this is the second plan of ascension. You give yourself over to the plan of the dominant oligarchical beliefs and their age-old mystical agenda, their great work. But you are subordinate. You don't get to be free in either scenario. You're a slave to... Uh, the biblical storyline or the uh, oligarchical esoteric biopolitical agenda but you must subordinate yourself you lose yourself you lose yourself to the plan the individual according the individual who this whole western the pinnacle of this biblical western creation was to build an individual separate from the collective that was the pinnacle we see that destroyed daily as uh, sort of in America, these Bill of Rights are being destroyed or um, all of the associated uh, real or perceived rights in the rest of the world are being destroyed on a daily basis. According to the second line of thought, man saves himself by losing himself, but in the mystical teaching, he loses himself in the deity. And in the scientific interpretation of life, he forgets himself as Tom, Dick, or Harry and discovers himself as man par excellence, you know, the Renaissance or the humanistic idea. Um, but that's a ruse, because as man, you are man subordinate to the world eugenic dictatorship. 